Yo, it's Zilla Rock, a Western University alum, class of 04. Shouts to Pete Bell, you changed my life. You're watching, you're listening to Cabbages Fucking Podcast. Blue Chips. 8,000, my mixtape, coming out soon. Check that shit, Wrecking Crew, Philadelphia, $3pistol.com, iLive.com. That's how you read website. Shit, is go there. You know what I mean? Get it all. <laughs> Blue Chips. We out here. Ricky Road Duffel Bag Boys. That's my fantasy basketball team. That's real. That's what the Co op Culture Elite. You can join next year. Co op Culture Podcast. Patreon. Ricky Road Duffel Bag Boys. I'll show you the team. I, my, my avatar is the Blue Chips. They're all standing around. It's real. That's real. Shouts to Queens. excited yeah i am excited this is our first edition of cabbages in space in space we're here in space we left new york we did we're in philly which is essentially outer space basically space we are recording live our guest is arriving shortly zilla Rocca. we're gonna have a real this is like a real thing this is what people do when they make podcasts when they're successful they go and they go places oh, it's, always about, it's always about goddamn money <laughs> if you haven't seen blue chips it's really going to look like i didn't like gary there but it you should watch the movie before you see this. we watched blue chips we watched that's blue this chips. episode you know, uh we had to talk about basketball we and did. hip-hop so we had to do a shack movie i had to teach you a lot about point shaving and just, I learned so little from this you, movie. You really, but you learned a lot from me. You we did learned say a lot, a lot of together. things. You said a lot of words. A lot of words about basketball. Just once. We went to the 76ers can game. Can we find a way to finally shave some points? Basically. I learned Get nothing in the basketball game money, other than... smoke a couple joints. To eat some edibles. Just the two of us. And insomnia cookies. That was pretty good. So, you know, all in all, it was a good night. This is going to be fun. You guys should stick around. This is why you're doing it. Where yeah. we're doing it. Yeah. Cabbages in space. Tommy gets all the roles. He gets all the roles a method man should get. Fucking basketball player, goon, gun thug, drug dealer. They're like, common. Yeah, him. Zero range. Jesus Christ. None my man, whatsoever. My man could walk in and deliver and be like, we got the new wallpaper samples. The same way he was like, my mother died. Dude, he was in like Wanted. The same and I'm like, way. how the fuck is Common in Wanted? He was and a Method bad man guy in a John like, Wick. Yeah, and I'm like, like Method Man Wick. is huge. He's fucking 6'4", like yeah. 240. And they're like, nah, man, get Common, bro. I like uh, like water for chocolate. Like that's yeah. He's just the best. If you don't give me $17 million, <laughs> I'm going to detonate the bomb. <laughs> Also, if you guys want sandwiches, they're in the fridge. Common. Same way. The fucking best Com- worst rapper who ever left. Common is Method Man Stolen Valor. He is, dude. That's what it is. It's a disgusting timeline. Are we recording? Is this actually yeah, we're on. This is all- we're on. Let's I go. Love it. Let's go. I love it. All right. So this is the first time we're doing one of these yeah. on location. Cabbages in space. Streets of Philadelphia. Yo, every street rapper in Philly sampled that in the 2000s. Everyone yeah. put that on their mixtape. That's date. awesome. How would they not? They have, they have to. to. We, I was walking out of since we announced this trip, since we started planning this trip, yeah. I have been singing this nonstop to Gary so every good. time we talk. On the train here. He'd be like, listen, uh, you know, I've had hotel. having some rough luck and like the family and stuff. And I'm like. Fixated. I was drinking a pop of moose. I was. Have you ever done this <laughs> That's beat? That's what I've been doing. Have you ever done over a beat? Yeah, you have to. No. You spit over no, that. It's, it's, you have to have it at some point. It's kind of, it's like, you kind of have to do it. The mixtape. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to. It's called proving ground. I have to do a mixtape. You have to do it for the culture. Dude, I heard yeah. it so many times. <laughs> Everybody took that. And it's got like a drum break. It's like boom, boom. It's like the boom, ba, ba, boom, ba. Like, but it's like the white, <laughs> the white guy version where it's like, <laughs> it's like the head nod. Like, oh, I can fuck with oh, this. Oh, it's such a sad song. It is. We didn't watch that movie. Just to be clear. I'm down for Philadelphia. Why don't you, why don't you introduce our guest? Homo, homophobic <laughs> ass Denzel. Fucking banger. 
We got Zilla Rocket here. <laughs> That's ah. what we're doing. That's what we're doing. This is going to be the loosest so episode we've ever done. So pleased to there introduce our guest today. Yeah. I'm so happy to introduce him. <laughs> you know, we've known Zilla Rocket. He's been friend for a while. Yes. Yeah. You know, we've talked to him for the newsletter, online. COVID time. Fans. Yep. Absolute fans of this stuff. Thanks, man. The future former rapper in person, in person. right here. If you haven't heard Stacking Chips, haven't heard Vadius Vic, you need to hear both those records. Bang. Some of the best stuff that's come out in the past few years. And uh, you can listen to all that stuff on Bandcamp. Go to his Bandcamp, I'm check there. it out, and I'm also there. wherever music is streamed or sold. But we always say Bandcamp because you can pay the artists. They like money. He's got good merch, it too. Is, it is kind good. of a cool hook to have, actually Just something. handing money to artists. It's money. should try that sometime. That's what I'm saying. Try mm-hmm. that out. Uh, yeah. So we did Blue Chips. This episode is about Blue Chips. Yes. And Nick Nolte. Sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Blue Chew. <laughs> it, since we're doing Blue Chips, this mm. is this is one that I'm sort of an expert on. It's one that I think that you're, you're also connected. Really, yeah, we, have, we have a bond. We've talked about it a little yeah. bit. We're talking uh, about basketball for like I want to save <laughs> the final press conference speech. Oh, wait, well, we got to yeah. push that to the end. We can't just go launch right into okay. this no. part. All right. Let's enough. start build with a little bit. Let's start with the fundamentals. I have I've been told that I have a little issue going right to the coolest part of All things. Right. <laughs> You'd love to do that. Ripping the beating heart out of the film before <laughs> we even start. Terrible. So. Mm. <laughs> but let's start because obviously, you know, we we've, we've done a few episodes in between this season and last season where we've basketball has been part of it we've done space jam a new legacy we did just right and so there's there's definitely a thing with like rappers and basketball movies obviously this core part of culture it's like the eighth pillar of hip-hop right probably say at this point if we're going to be revisionists basketball movies yes what are your favorite basketball movies above the rim Mm -hmm. um this movie Mm -hmm. um what other basketball movies do i really like God, it's it's been it's been a drought. There hasn't been that many in the last like six seven years. The '90s were like peak basketball oh, cinema. Yeah. So I was saying before we record, like Heaven is a Playground. Um, I even watched like me and Cash talk about like, we we watched like what was that Billy Crystal shit? He was in a French Forget Paris. My Giant. Was that one? No, remember My Giant. Like, Forget My, Paris is correct. Forget My Paris Giant is the one I want to. Talk I remember watching about. Forget Paris <laughs> like just to see the NBA cameos for five minutes. Space Jam, the first one. Mm. Uh, it was a treasure trove. And now I'm like, I don't even know what good basketball movies there are. But this one's fucking fantastic. You know, it, what this has one's happened, so good. truly, is that at this point, if you're going to make a basketball movie, it's centered around a coach right. who's having issues with the kids. Sunset Park. Ooh. That's probably Ooh, my favorite. This shame. and Sunset Park are tied. Sunset uh, mine, Park's got a better soundtrack. Mine's Teen Mob Wolf. Deep. Teen, Teen Wolf, Wolf, classic. An absolute banger. And I also, fucking... it changed the rules on whether or not wolves could play basketball. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big <laughs> Scott. Uh, you you named most of the ones that I love. All the rest oh, of them are documentaries. Awesome. White Men Can't Team Jump. Wolf. That's White the Man one. Can't White Men Can't Jump. One. That's wow. the one. Excellent yeah. basketball. We did White Men Can't Jump last season. The yeah, remake. Yeah, we the did remake. the remake oh, with God. Jack Harlow. Oh, Jack Harlow, which was not as good. I can't, man. Movie, yeah, almost. That's a, that's a it was almost a movie. That's yeah, the nicest can, thing I can say about it. That was like a CW show or something, like the way it looked. Although it was cool to see him uh, in a movie context being the exact same thing that we always knew he was. <laughs> him walking in and be like, "Hey, yo, let me play some basketball." Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just has like, <laughs> but like new balanced out because he's in the fucking commercials. Yep. Oh my god! It's so oh, it's bad. bad. It was a bad film. Um, I've watched more basketball movies since being on this fucking podcast. Yeah, it's time. been a slow burn where I've just sort of turned this season into the basketball season. It's not going to happen. This is great. It's not going to happen. This should be on I'm the Ringer. You happen. should work for the Ringer. Like, yeah. this is that channel. I hate this. The basketball movie channel. I mean, listen, Spotify. if we're going to get bought out, there are worse <laughs> places to get bought out than the Ringer. Someone give me money. Dude. Give me money. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, but we chose this movie specifically because it's rapper movie season, not basketball movie season. Correct. But... I felt like we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Shaquille O'Neal, who is the Neon Badeau. triple threat. Correct. Rapper, actor, and also he plays some kind of sport. And this was <laughs> the rise was happening when yes. he was in this. So what uh, magic is what? He joins magic in 92? 92. 92, yes. he's, he's number one draft pick, right? Yes. 92, number one draft pick. 93, Penny Hardaway joins. 93. Oh, yeah. I'm Gary, I don't like basketball. Here's every fact about basketball. In the history. <laughs> yeah, yes. no, I, I memorized <laughs> facts for the show. I'm making Because I'm a fucking fan. professional. I made him go to a 76ers game. And Sixers passed on Penny Hardaway for Sean Bradley yeah. in that draft. 
They sure so that's did. a tough one. That was that was. Think about rough. it this way: per pound, mm-hmm. who do you really want? Do you want the guy that's really good at basketball, or do you want the guy that's it's more pounds? Seven foot six Mormon. There's more human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's more human there. Who more wore number seventy six on the seventy sixers? John Bradley is more human. Like, than like human. the cross that's branding true. was incredible, but Shout out it just uh, it was a tough one. It was a mm. tough look for the franchise. But yeah, Shaq was on a roll, man. Yeah. So like ninety three. This movie comes out in 94. Correct. Mm-hmm. February 94. Uh, I'd say we're looking at next week, based on the timing of this, this is 30 years. Wow. Like this yes. month. 30 years this 30 month. Years. Jesus. And so it comes out. Nothing has changed in college basketball. In 30 years. <laughs> wow. Wow. This it's, movie is just as present with the rules. It really as is. Ever yes. <laughs> but this is like his EGOT moment, because this is like after, so Shaq Fu comes out, or Shaq Diesel comes out 1992. Okay. Um, and he's already has two Hot 100 hits by that point. Yes. He's one of them certified RIA Gold. The other uh, did not, but the album shipped platinum. Mm-hmm. I say shipped platinum for those of you who are music industry people who understand how gold and platinum at the RIA used to work mm-hmm. before we went into streaming and nothing makes sense anymore. Right. But back in the day, you ship platinum. You ship enough units, the stores, but it was popular. There's the thing about it is like sometimes you talk to these people who move into these other areas and they are not Right. good at what they do no. they do not shift units like everybody tried it fucking bruce willis everybody tried to like move from something they were into something they weren't and it was the you know it seems like it was riddled with basketball players with kobe ai like some of the most popular ones definitely tried yeah. to cut records. chris webber put a record out yeah, yeah, yeah whole yeah. album Ron too Artest. much drama with the number two true warrior. true warrior yep um it's it would there were a lot of them none of them touched shack's no. numbers no none not of even them. close did you own shack diesel I didn't, but I watched the videos on the box oh, all yeah. the time. Like, okay. shoot it, pass it, slam it. I'm outstanding. Biological didn't bother. Yeah. Biological is everywhere. a wonderful song. He was, and the songs were everywhere. And then, like, the No Hook joint would be on mixtapes. It had RZA and Meth. He just had, like, every hot part, like Redman and Eric Fife Sermon. Is on, I mean, like, he's Fife. In, like, it is. We were talking the other day. It's so good. Scratch. It's, yeah, well, <laughs> come on, Mike. I love that song. So I was just playing that. Driving home from something like loud as shit in my car, like not even ironically, I'm like, this song is so fucking good. Yo, Al, set it off. Yo, Shaq, you set it off. Yo, ill, you set it off. Al, set today, it actually. off. Yo, that shit is crazy. <laughs> that song is so good. But That's I don't dope. understand. Like, I mean, he made some good choices. Like, obviously, people like Eric Sermon. Like, you're working with like some pretty good people right. on these records. But it's like, why was like you know, skills? Why was that like? He's from Newark, right? Born in Newark, went to school in Louisiana, right? Playing for the Orlando Magic, right? And he's got a G Funk single. Because it was, yeah, it was like that's big, what it was. Yeah, the G, yeah Warren G. He's shirt. America. He's everything. He's all American. He that's had true. Every he is style. Everything. He had every, and then like when he had the Fushnik and shit, he did their shit. He was just like silly putty. Like whoever he's with, like that's who whose album could, or song he, he made. Do it. Yeah, it was so good. What's up, Doc? Was definitely a thing for me because my cousin was a DJ. He's older than me, about five years, and so I would go, and my cousin lived in Florida. And so I would get exposed to a lot of Southern stuff because right. of that. But he basically was like pulling out these records. And I remember he had the 12 inch of What's Up Doc. And we listened to that like crazy. When we right. listened around, we would listen to his records. Sorry, Ron. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, and I remember being like impressed. I mean, he's like, what, he's like third build on that song? He's like third yeah. verse. There's like on? four verses. Yeah, he's yeah. at the end of it. Song. He, it's a very long song. And he, he has like eight bars at the end. Yeah. But he was on Arsenio. It was fucking crazy. And this, this movie is like probably. Rewatching it again, he's he's really good. It's not like a silly shack roll oh. compared to you know, like Kazam and all that other shit. Steel. Did you guys do Steel yet on this podcast? Should we, should we talk to you? We should tell him. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll break the news. Break the you news. were really close to getting Steel or Kazam. Oh, so this. fucking close to Kazam. Dude, Dude, for my close. comic book heads, man, yo, DC tried to make Steel of John time. Henry Irons for fucking ever. God damn. And then the movie, he's like on his little tiny motorcycle and Ray J. You know, it's, it's so bad. Good soundtrack though. Like I loved the Death of Superman stuff. Like yeah. I used to read all. That was like right when I read comics. Was yeah. that? But by the time that movie came oh, out, God. I was no longer reading comics. They, well, they put the movie out like five years yeah, late. Ninety seven. Like, no gave a fuck about Steel. Ninety seven. No one cares. So. And then Mask is like, oh, <laughs> you can <laughs> like a can of soup on his in head. that <laughs> era. In that era, I feel like you could you could measure a comic book movie by how desperately they tried to sell the toys. Yo, oh because God. if the if Mattel. it was good, like Batman ninety or whatever. Right. You didn't really have to work to sell the toys. Right. They just were at McDonald's. They were everywhere. They were just collectible cups. Sure. These steel, they were like, we will 
We will, we will do school. anything you'd like us to do. Personal Shaq person. will personally date your mom <laughs> if you'll just go to the film, please. <laughs> we'll make it, it was an awful. So we, we were really close to giving you one of those two. And I, I been honored. the I white been... knight that I am, wow. I rolled in Phrasing. and I was like, we should watch Blue Chips. Yes. It's an actual film. It's a real movie. Yeah. I'm Whether or not you like it, it's gonna. It's a real film. You uh, avoided it because of William Friedkin. That's yeah. how you actually got away. I sold it with William. I was like, it's a William oh, Friedkin. Yeah. He's like, it's not a William Friedkin movie. I was like, Hence well, all the, the, it's the, the cameos. Weekend, a lot maybe. of real actors are in this movie, man. Yeah. Real actors. I forgot. I'm like, Luke Gossett Jr., Alfre Wood. I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot. Alfre Woodard. Uh, it's also Robert Wool. Robert, yes, Wall's doing in, his pre r like, list. In the part. perfect time for him. Like, this is <sighs> this is Wool at the peak of his powers, which isn't saying much, but God, it was the then. The mom from Johnny Darko. Yeah, she's in there. McDonald. Yes. McDonald. Big Ed O'Neill. Yeah, Ed, Ed, Ed is World. as Ed. Yeah, as Ed. His Ed, yeah, Ed. name is Ed. Now, Ed, you just got to get your mind out of the gutter, Ed. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> I, we're getting so close know. to that. I know. Yeah. It's just more prominent because <laughs> remember Action Bronson put that on Blue Chips that sequence. Well, that was that's something we so also blasted that today. We blasted blasted Blue Chips, so Blue Chips too today. Mm. The thing about that was just like you think about like the influence of this movie, like obviously Shaq and his presence, not just as a rapper, but like influence on right. rappers and on verses. But like Blue Chips specifically, this movie inspiring one of the best series of hip-hop in my Ever. opinion yes blue chips blue chips 2 and to a lesser extent but still 7, okay 000. blue chip 7000 mm -hmm. but still like great stuff like great stuff and like party some of my favorite things to listen to it's like, party supplies what happened to party supplies he was so dope oh, he was so good you don't hear him anywhere everybody All else beats were just projects. like 10 minute youtube rips like fuck it let's just do it everyone else that worked on the blue chip series alchemist harry fraud like it's seven because everyone's on 7000 everyone's 7, on 7000 yes so harry fraud Alchemist, like it's all real people. He has uh, Chop Chops, probably my favorite Bronson song, and that's mm -hmm. on 7,000. For me, it's Blue Chips 2, Contemporary Man. That's a Which is just like <laughs> slices of. Is that like what's the one on sob stories that Harry Fraud did? Oh, um, that's my The Rockers yeah. with uh, the, rock, the, yeah, rockers, yeah. the Rockers. The Rockers. The Rockers. Marty Janetti hook. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, that's, that's Harry Fraud production with Wiz Khalifa. Yes. Wiz Khalifa comes on at some point, and you know, you have to suffer through. Sometimes for beautiful art, you have to suffer from things. See, look, I'm, see, I'm biased again. I'm from Queens. Queens. And my favorite Bronson. borough. It's the yeah. best borough. I feel like I am a Queens rapper. I would feel like you would fit in really I'm well. very Queens. You could be in the neighborhood. Like, shouts to Brooklyn and all them. But no, I, no, me, and, me and like, Shells, yeah, yeah. me and Scorsese, the rest, we would always be like, you know, I would talk. We're like, dude, we are Queens rappers. I live even in Brooklyn. I've lived in Philly. Brooklyn for a long time. Queens is the best. Because they have, like, glossy, sh nice. shiny beats, but there's also, like, sad. Yeah. So it's, like, jiggy, but, like, kind of more, more, like, grim, but then, like, Jerry Curl R and B like a really really good look. And I, take, I, I identify. Yeah. I take the bus past Queensbridge pretty much five days a week, going to the office. I worship Queensbridge. So like it's just it's my favorite. It's, it's, it's my AOL pride. screen name had like QB in it when I was a kid. Like that's how much I <laughs> fucked amazing. with that. I respect. I was that. like highly in the Queensbridge. Highly respect that. Nature, Autumn Core Mega, Lake Eda Kid, all oh, those dudes, Mob oh Deep, all those dudes. I was obsessed with Queensbridge. But how do you feel about Bravehearts? I don't enjoy Bravehearts. Okay, let's be I, fair. It's, it's a good it's, effort. It's, it's like, insane. it's like Thanos, Thanasis Antetokounmpo. It's the Thanasis Antetokounmpo <laughs> of fucking major oh, labels. Back to basketball. Oh man, it no, is. No, so don't close. Gary, it's like, I guess we have to give him a deal. I guess we have to give him sure. singles. I guess we got to put him on a Nas. Okay, because it's Nas's brother. Okay, we got to pretend we like it. Okay, oh, look, oh, the Bravehearts, oh, hey. Bravehearts are back. Oh, it's and a if Braveheart he actually party. scores, we have to lose our minds. Yeah, and it's like, oh. You the are. times that there's an actual yeah. bar in there, we have like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> okay, <God. laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I'm a, obviously I have a lot of biases towards Queens, but I don't. I chose this movie because of William Freakin. I said, okay, we'll do this right, because it just it. seems so wild to me that the guy who did The Exorcist, French Connection, the Sorcerer, to live and die in L.A., mm -hmm. Sorcerer, Sorcerer, Sorcerer's, Sorcerer's crazy, crazy. Uh, cruising. cruising, 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 which I owned on DVD and Blue Chips and, and Blue, Blue Chips. Chips and Blue Chips, sure. Which for basketball fans, we were watching this thing. Uh, we don't get to watch the movies together very often. This time we got to watch one together. Mm. We got lives. And we, during this, you know, I'm just shouting out every basketball player, right. every legendary Hall of Fame coach. This thing is stacked with Hall of Fame coaches. And I, I was thinking you rewatching it this week. You can't find basketball like, documentaries with no. this many Hall of Famers. Like Jim Boeheim yeah. is in this shit with Roll and Jerry Tarkanian. I was like, when I was watching Camp it again, I'm like, in there. Yeah, I'm like, how did they get in? And I, I thought to myself, William Freakin. That's how all these people step to this movie. Like yeah. it's a director who has some respect, right? Like, like it's, but it's also real the, shit. the the I forget that guy's name, but the guy that wrote it wrote some absolutely legendary. Was it Ron sports Shelton? Movies. Ron Shelton. Oh yeah, fucking Bull Durham. Bull Durham. White Cuff. man can't jump. White man can't, White can't jump. jump. Yeah. He did Cobb. Uh, Cobb. Did he? he did do Cobb? Cobb's the least good. the least watchable baseball movie. The Great White Hype. 
Watching great anything one. about Cobb oh, is tough. I saw that in theaters. Wow, a great one. Another great soundtrack, dude. Had oh, Camp yeah, Low, Get Ghostface. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is all. This is a great soundtrack era. Everything we're talking about. By the, the soundtrack way. for this movie, though. I don't it's remember a little weird. It's, it's not like hip hop at all. Rock. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. with Nile Rodgers. It's very William Friedkin's sound score. That I get. Yeah, it's like here's fucking all these hip hop guys, and it's like where 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 where. Like it's just all on the watchtower. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, why <laughs> would that be in the dorm at, at a Tony's party? party? Seriously, that's what they're banging. Yes, it's I'm like nice, playing DOS effects or some 1994. shit. 1994. Yeah, put them naughty. Yeah, we finna get fucked up. Somebody throw on the fucking Hendrix. Yeah, Jimmy, bro, can we get the greatest gypsies. hits? Put that shit on. Don't Listen. put on the album, just the greatest hits, please. <laughs> it's like, if you're going to do that, it should just be like, what, Bob, Mar- Bob Marley Legend. I know. That's it. That's what it should be. Yeah. <laughs> College. That's the only one that's timeless. Truly right. timeless. Oh but God. otherwise, no. There was so much good hip-hop. That's, again, it's one of the weird things. Like, we watch these movies. I feel like they would have been listening to Sublime at that point. Or uh, yeah, oh. A little too early for that. A little too okay. early. Unless they were listening oh, to, Oh, this like, was 94. That's yeah. yeah. This is like... We're just KRS. Like, yeah, you got to think of the timing. But, like, timing-wise, yeah. like... Is Hollywood still didn't understand what was going on. So, like, when you get into the later into the 90s, yeah. they get it, and the soundtracks have ties in with these record labels. So, True. Def Jam or Priority or any of those places, you start to get these things. Where like, okay. then they figure it out. But 1994, it's still like, oh, is hip hop a soundtrack for a movie? Unless no, we're gonna, we like need Nile Rodgers and yeah, Jeff unless Beck. It was like, unless it was <laughs> we like. We need uh, Jeff Beck. The Jeff kids Beck. love Jeff Beck. When I think of Shaq, yeah, that shit was wired, it's Shaq bro. and Penny and Jeff Beck, all the same. Yeah, it, it was like unless it was an urban movie like Meteor Man or mm-hmm. like New Jack City, hell yeah, Donovan, what's up? Um, that's where like the freaking him not knowing what to do with the music and and also no labels being like it's a Shaq movie, no Shaq songs, none. <laughs> like no, none. he doesn't do a blue chip song. There's not a blue chips video. No. It really is like its own. No, space. in fact, it's when you when you're getting to we watch the credits for these a lot. And we're watching the end credits, and they bring back the like the fight Western song? University fight song yes, instead yes, of having song. a song by one of the people. Yes. <laughs> and you can easily do like the the message song. Yes, they can have like the Shaq do the message song. Like yo, don't don't sell yourself out. Don't do the whole blue chip. Like he could have done that shit. Yeah, they easily. could have sampled that and made it into. <laughs> yes, a song he put out his second album that same year, oh, November of that year. <laughs> he had music in oh the my tank. God. It was sitting there. And or they, they could like, have had like the. You, we got like two and a half minutes to fill some space, and we just need a song like something. Why don't we use the marching band? <laughs> they couldn't. They, couldn't, they really I, stole the show. They couldn't get uh, Leonard Cohen, so they were like, "Ah, no. just put it in the stock." Yeah. Mm. Fight songs, but see the fact that Swizz Beats hasn't sampled that yet oh, is just oh, sitting right there on the table. When I heard that music again, I'm like, "This is a Swizz Beats." You gotta be into it. Oh, you gotta come be into on. it. Yes, the tiniest Fuck keyboard you sound do. you can find. Let's go. Yeah, blue chips. Like he needs to do that shit. <laughs> God that. damn it. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like that's. Get that. It's a, it could be his moment. You know, if we're bringing back a lot of people, DJ Drama, we're bringing mm-hmm. back a lot of people who were like, what, what did you do again? What was it that <laughs> you did? What, what do you bring to the table? Got it. That's okay. all wild <laughs> shit. It. It's so good. Look, and I love DJ Drama stuff. Don't get me wrong. But it's just like he's on everything again. Everything. It's so good. And stuff that he doesn't belong on, too. Um, like it, he's doing, that, he's that doing West CBS bangers at this point. Dude, that West Side Gun and, and Rick Ross joint on his album, I was like. No, on that yeah, album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfection. Like, this is what I need. Perfection. I James need that though. shit. I love that album because I love the fact that West Side Gun got to be like, remember all these trap mixtapes from the 2010s? Yeah. And I loved all that shit. I was like, best. I was on Dat Piff. They're all gone. Every week. And it's like I know. history erased. Someone that, should, someone should do a podcast series about the 2010 yeah. trap mixtape. The guys who did the uh, the guys who did the blog era podcast, the uh, it's the real guys. They did a yeah. hell of okay. a job. Uh, yeah, with that. I, I didn't check hell that job with that. Basically, they talked to all these people. You know, it's amazing. Then you got with the the guys who did um, there's these guys who did a whole book about the mixtape era. Uh, oh yeah, Stand Up Kiss. We had them on. Yeah, and so, Evan. Yeah, Evan Arbach. Evan, yes, we're Great talking book. to them. Oh, we're talking. We're talking. We're talking. I'm talking to them for the newsletter. They're the uh, best. Soon. Well, like, dudes. They're thank God for the work they're doing to they're document so these things because the news, the newsletter is crazy. You oh. sign up for the newsletter yeah, every yeah. Sunday, you get the link to an old mixtape. Yeah, oh, I didn't know about shit. this. Shit, I'm gonna shit. do that as soon as we're done. The here. one question that I that I had for them, I asked them in advance, and I was disappointed. Like, I was like, "Did you get to talk to J Love?" Like, mm-hmm. We didn't get to talk to J Love. I know. Again, now I'm like, uh, there's pictures of his of his tape in the books, yeah. but they didn't talk. to him. I keep like I trying know. to figure out how I'm gonna get to talk to J Love at some point because he just posts pictures of himself. He's the most hood white dude I've ever seen. But he posts himself like pictures of himself online. And just like you're like, he's there. He's in Queens, he's right? Attention. It's where, I don't know where he's based now. Oh, he's not. He's, okay. he, I don't think he's based in Queens uh, anymore. Satellite guy. But like, yeah, like you see him and you're just like, ah, oh, man, like 
I would love to talk to that guy. Just pick his brain for an hour for so for, dope. for the for this. I don't think we're gonna watch a movie, but you know, we'll do something. Make it make him watch uh, the air up there. Make him watch Steel. <laughs> Steel. <laughs> Steel. Wait, what yeah, was the it. one? The air up there. That was the Kevin Bacon one with the African kid. That's the fucking worst basketball air movie of all time. The air up there. That the is the worst fucking is... basketball. I fell also, asleep in the theater with my whole team watching that movie. That shit was boring. also could be. We fell asleep. Other than like <laughs> movies that were made. Like just post slavery, like the twenties and thirties, <laughs> yeah. might be the most racist movie it's of all time. Rough. It's it a is rough watch. Wildly dude. racist. And there's there's four minutes of I don't think at the they end stop of the movie. short of calling African savages. Yo, I think they actually do it more it than is. once. It's worse than like the Danny Ferry clips when he was talking about Luel Dag. He's like, he's a rough African or something. Like shit. he was, I was quote, like, that yo, it's 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 better. not really known all that well. Such but a weird he was movie. quoting air up there when he yo, did that. Yo, Danny Furry, he got zapped. <laughs> he got zapped talking that air up there shit. <laughs> so I feel like for full disclosure, I should say that I I didn't really like this movie a whole lot. Wow. Okay. Go on. Right, go on. Right, like right. do it. I feel like and again, you guys are sort of exemplifying exactly the thing. It's like there's an enthusiasm that you guys have for this film because of your love of basketball. Correct. I'm not a basketball fan. I'm Wait, just you're not? Nice I'm here. not. Hold on. I'm not. <laughs> it's like no surprise. Like we talk about like we talk about like, this all his, the time. His dad, basketball coach. Right. Like so like his daddy him. before him. Nice. Passed <laughs> and, out. And he's yeah. a giant. You can't tell from the chairs because but if I sat in that chair, he would have looked small. Yeah, I can't really here. stand up in this room. What's your wingspan, like 7'3"? Uh, I don't know. I've never really measured it. I don't know. I've never been in a draft, <laughs> okay. so no one's ever actually measured it. your vert? My, my you the 48-inch vert? Uh, I actually, I ended up quit. 48-inch? Uh, yeah, you got that vert. Closer to 8, <laughs> eight. than 48. Just 8. We're, cl- we're closer to 8, is all I'm saying. So it makes sense why you guys like this movie. Right, so right. go on. Why didn't you yeah. like it? So, you know, like, sports is never a big deal in my house. My dad didn't care about sports. Right. It was never a thing. Like, you know, exact opposite for your boy. Immigrants, Same. like 24 like hours a day. So, yeah. like, sports or movies? You know, we, we didn't have basketball in Cuba. We had baseball, so I cared about baseball. Fuck yeah. And I was a Mets fan as Word. a kid because I lived in Queens. Right. So I was, you know, 1986. I, well, there it I'm, is. I'm a Mets fan. I'm a Mets fan for life, even now. Mm. So, because I'm not a basketball fan, mm-hmm. like, I've seen, we went to the Sixers yesterday. Mm hmm. And that was the second professional basketball game I've ever been to in my God life. Damn. It was really hard to sell the sport when, A, the 76ers were very bad. Correct. B, their opponent, the Hawks, also did everything Chiefs. they could yes. to lose a game where they were far superior. We went by 22. And then on three, the, the third point being the most important point, two of the best world-class basketball players who play for the 76ers Correct. were not there. Not there. So we were watching, and, and everyone was sick. Yes. So we're watching, like, G-leaguers compete against a full-strength, terrible <laughs> yes. Hawks team. Yes. And he's like, why are they bad? And I'm like, wow. Well, yeah. We're missing four starters. We're missing four starters. Yeah. It's pretty tough. We just made a trade. It's pretty tough. Yeah, it's tough. It was a tough one. Uh, so we're dealing with two genuine fans. So right. for you guys okay. seeing this, this is already thematic material you'd Correct. be excited about. Correct. Right. There are cameos galore. Plus, and both of us, right. I assume, have seen this movie a ton of times. Yes. I was in a coaching household, so we watched this so movie. So we, we had a cable network out here. Not enough of used to have. Do you ever have Prism? Oh, yeah. So we used to have a local cable network called Prism that would have Sixers, Flyers, Phillies games, and then porn every night after 11. Mm. And But then during the day, you would just watch Bad Boys or Blue Chips. So Blue Chips, Bad Boys, Flyers, Sixers, Phillies, porn. It was the greatest I mean, listen, fucking channel. If you it's if like you offered that defined. to me and was yes. like, listen, your life is gonna simplify. Correct. That's All it. you're gonna get is basketball, pornography, and these two movies, I'd be like That's it. You I don't it even down. want to know the other options. I'm in. It was great. Let's do it. Yeah, and so I get to your chips and, and It's a right, bad boys connection great. to Blue Chips too. Ron Shelton has story, Ron Shelton also story wrote credit two. on Bad Boys oh, too. Oh shit. Did he write the, the John Lovitz, Dana Carvey version? Remember that was going to be the original cast? Oh, my God. I don't. I have you to go into history of that. Yeah, that was, that was the original cast. We're the both Lovitz history. heads. I didn't know that. Yeah, Lovitz and oh, Dana would, Carvey. I would Whoa. watch that. Yeah. I mean, I watched Give me Dana some Carvey. Skittles. Some Fruity Surprise. Strike Go. <laughs> that's how you drive. From now on, yeah. that's how you yep. drive. I could see Lovitz yelling Fuck you, that. fuck with me. We two, two dead bitches in the sea. <laughs> I love it. Because I watched it on Prism every day. I came home from school. Bad Boys was all. And Blue Chips. Yeah. And then we would have like local sports talk debate shows before the games. The very worst of, of sports talk. Fun. It was a great time. Local. So anyway, so you hated this movie. <laughs> I don't say I hated it. I want to be I want to clear. It is, Out of one to ten. Out of one to five? ten, this is like a 
four. Maybe, wow. Maybe maybe, maybe right. a three and a half. Fair the, the second, I will say this, maybe the three and second half. time that I watched it, okay. I enjoyed it more than the All first. Right, good. Because All it's right. sort of like, for me, because I don't have this passion for It's very for inside baseball to use it it's it's basketball baseball term for basketball. Sure. Coral Ravage. Coral Ravage. Not a baseball movie. All right. All right. Enough. I mean, I'm just saying you should know these things right now. <laughs> It's out. You know but it course. is it's very like so the stakes are different for me like, okay. I watch films where the stakes are life or death okay but to these people these characters yes basketball is yeah, like happy, life the fucking booster happy the, so like I get it in the sense that in their world it means something right but for me as somebody who doesn't care about it it's like this is just like nonsense okay. I didn't go to a school where I didn't go to like college where they cared about sports all that much gotcha. like, I went all to right. BU in Boston I didn't go to BC where they cared about football like crazy. Yes. And when they were trying to recruit me for BC, because they don't have any uh, minorities at school. Right. So they were like desperate to bring in people, Latinos or anybody. So like, oh, they brought us in there. We saw like a BC game. I saw my first college oh, game shit. was there. And it's great. But the reality is like, it wasn't part of the culture. I didn't, was, the school didn't have Greek life. So basically, like, it's just like, we just. All right. You You're know. not 100% of the culture. It's the reason why I'm a, it's the reason why I'm a music geek. It's the reason why that makes sense. Band, because like, that's where I cared about. Boss of the good music. So For, when you watch this film as somebody who doesn't have yeah. a doesn't doesn't get that the cameos are cool. Right. Doesn't get that for a lot of people this stuff is hugely important. Correct. It feels like a low stakes thing coming from somebody who did movies like The Exorcist. Correct. Or right. even Cruising, which is like still like they're trying to catch a killer. Like, Correct. Yeah. I, I watch a lot. I watch a lot of movies where they're trying to catch a killer or someone's trying to avenge something. Okay. Sorcerer <laughs> is this, one of the tensest movies of all time. It's one of the most tense cool. movies I've ever fucking seen. Fucking powerhouse shit, man. Where you just sort Great. of stare at it like, I think everyone involved in this died, right? We're gonna have to look this up. <laughs> so but there's no way that these people lived through this craziness. Roy Scheider died during the movie. Roy Scheider died. Actually died during the movie. He lived really? through a shark attack and died on a bridge. That's wild. <laughs> so when you watch Blue Chips now, thirty years later for the first time, when it was when it was originally out, were you aware of it though? Yeah. Because okay, so basketball because okay. like I mean, like, I grew up in New York, so like Basketball culture was definitely part of it. Right. And like I always talk about it in the sense of like Space Jam's two years later, ninety six. Gotcha. Yep. So like by that point, like we had been wearing for years like the Looney Tunes yes. gear. Fuck you. You know, like I mean we all had this everything. Stuff. Yeah. And not like I didn't play with my friends. Like we right. didn't sure. like I didn't play ball, but I was not I'm not particularly tall, I'm only five ten. Right. It wasn't like a like a big you're, you're thing. a starting guard. It wasn't like a big thing for me. And because it didn't matter my house. Keep hyping him up, I love it. So yeah. I played it. Right. But like, and so I was part of it, but I wasn't like watching games. Like, gotcha. So my friends who would have conversations that were deep about mm-hmm. that, I'd sort of glaze over. Okay. The flip side of this is if you're into basketball, this movie is so dense it's so good. with incredible cameos and, and even like meaty roles mm. that are played by people who are, if you think of the list of Hall of Famers, I think I said this earlier. Yeah. But the list of Hall of Famers is so deep that you can't name them by memory. No, just I the coaches. About them. There's like six Hall of Fame coaches. Right. College players. There's like three or four college Hall of Famers, which yes. like is almost hilarious to think about now because anyone good is bailing. Right. After one You're year. like, what is the point of the College Basketball Hall of Fame? Right. Anymore? Pro Basketball Hall of Famers. Yes. Superstars. Correct. Larry Bird. Larry Bird is in this film. Bob Cousy. Bob Cousy. Your boy. Sat it like walks into a scene and hits like seventeen straight free yeah. throws, and Shoot that it. actually happened. Yeah, that was real. To the like point where, yeah, where Nick yeah, Nolte's like, "Are you gonna fucking Nolte miss?" Says a line that he improvised. Like, do you ever miss? No, you ever miss? And I was like, <laughs> and he shot like thirty percent for his me career a to realize who it was. And I was like, once I realized it was Bob Cousy, I was like, oh, that's why he hit seventeen in a row. Yeah, that guy never missed shots. Right, he invented the modern point guard. So let me ask you guys this then: When I rewatched it, the all right. The NCAA side of things, right? Outside of the basketball actual... And I think the, the action is good, the way they film it. Like, it is really good. We'll yeah. talk about that in a second. Okay, yeah, I don't sure. want to... Oh, you have an agenda, my bad. I'm not... No, no, I don't no, no, want to... Okay. Oh, you no, don't? Agenda. I just no, no, see, no, like, no, no, bullet no, no. points. We're not professional chaos. Please oh. forget. The, the you, NCAA... You okay. No, I don't, let, let's, I'm going to let you guys take it there because I'm sure you have it lined up, even, like, with the ending. So, I don't want to step on toes no, no, with ahead, the NCAA. Because it's like, okay. The NCAA side of it is so bizarre because they have the... Okay, let's talk about Western University. Okay. Let's start with that. Let's do it. Okay. It's presumed in the movie that... Well, no, it's not. It's flat out stated that the football team is a top 10 team every year. Mm-hmm. The basketball team has won two titles with Coach Pete Bell. Mm-hmm. The baseball team is doing well. Yeah. Track. 
They're crushing. They're in. They're basically they're UCLA. They're yeah. in. They're in the they're West U, Coast. They're, they're mm-hmm. supposed to be UCLA down to the college. They filmed Correct. it. Correct. They and they filmed, filmed it right on UCLA. Okay, okay. so we, we presume this is a huge fucking college that is a haven for sports and it's a money maker. Okay, within that, Bob Cousy is the athletic director. Is that his role? Yes. Yes. Okay. He's the AD. So Bob Cousy's in charge of this billion dollar school in 1993. Mm-hmm. That is paying football players. Yeah. Right. But he doesn't know. He about doesn't it. quote unquote know. I don't want to. Even though they've been rolling for right. 20 years. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> so then you have to presume the baseball program is paying people, yeah. the track and field, they're steroiding them up. They're doing mm-hmm. all this wild shit. Sure. But when Pete Bell decides, okay, I need to stay up with the Joneses because my program is stale yeah. and I want to start paying Ricky Rowe and them. Bob Cruz like, I don't want to know. I was like, you do know. This is fucking crazy to me watching this now. And he's like looking at me like, don't do it, Pete. Like, oh, Oh, man. There's no plausible deniability on that guy's part. So so the only thing I think of is. his face at the end of the film during the speech, which we won't talk about yet. Right. But during the speech, they kind of cut to him and he's like. Yes. But so the only thing <laughs> oh, I can think of is right he holds my only the only line you can draw from a logical point of view is he holds the basketball program nearer and dearer as like the virgin princess because he's a hooper. Right. But he's fine with everyone getting paid yeah, everywhere. Right. Happy's yeah. cutting checks, Friends probably paying program, for prostitutes yeah. like Rick Patino and them to the kids, or Jesus for seventeen year olds, those wild shit. Wild. You know, be cream in the clear, mm-hmm. all that. And with basketball, is like, nah, man, this is a this clean is program. This is, this sacred, is sacred, sacred over here. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, dude. That's no. crazy. I think you nailed it right that there. That was I crazy think, though, to watch. I think that I will give credit to the movie where, like, I think it's a Pete Bell decision. Is that he's like, Pete Bell the whole time is like, we're a clean school because, like, I care about this. I want right. these kids to get an education. My kids graduate. All these things right. that... You know, I grew up in a in a coach's household, so those were things that were very important in my house. Sure. To the point where, like, years later when I started watching, like, as a human and not as the shadow of my all-knowing, all-seeing basketball right. dad eye, I was like, oh, pay these motherfuckers. This is stupid. Give them money. So. And all of this goes away. School, right. If the whole school is doing this shit for years and Pete Bell, who knows who Happy is, and he knows what Happy's about, right? Yeah. Why is he the whole time like, nah, man, not us? And Bob Cousy's like, yeah, not the basketball team. Yeah. When the whole fucking college is raking in he, illegal funds. He's yeah. standing on business. That's just ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, <laughs> that's, that's, bro. again, that's where it it's comes so into my ridiculous. problems. It's so ridiculous. No, I'm with it. Film. I'm with it. I'm just saying that I think what the movie wanted to do right. was paint Pete Bell as, as a saint. Which is bullshit, too, Which because when Happy because calls him out. the first thing he does is ball out a bunch of 18 yes. to 20 year olds. Yeah. He told them they're pieces, pieces of shit. shit. They don't deserve more than one. They Multiple. don't deserve lockers. They don't deserve to be there. He and then afterwards he's like that was the best team I ever so coached. So would it shock <laughs> that you? That was the best that was the best season we ever had. Would it shock you to know that uh Nolte shadowed Bob Bobby Knight. Knight. Yes. But then they and then they Pretty put Bobby role. Knight in the fucking movie. I'm like, this and is he's weird. like calm. He's like, okay, guys, let's get back on defense. He's drawing plays like here. Hey, why, guys, why don't you so, inbound to oh, the side? You know, just, like, yeah. let's talk a little bit more yeah. about like the complexities of the game. Whereas if you saw him coach, he was, he was choking kids. Remember, time, he was choking he was like, kids. I'll kill you. Yeah, yeah, he's like, I'll beat if you. If you don't get back on defense, I will eat your mother and. And everyone's like, he's the best coach I've ever seen. My dad he assaults seventeen year olds, but he coached middle schoolers. So he's like walking into practices being like. Charlie, you piece of fucking shit. That's I will eat you alive. Life. And his mom, who's my Sunday school teacher, we're in a tiny town, <laughs> right. is standing there like, oh, I never. You know, yo, like these things are real. Cra- I, have, I had, like, yo, I had, cr- I had baseball. Co- all my baseball coaches yeah. were hot blooded, insane. This was Italian dad, with five kids at 23 then. years old, smoking this five packs of cigarettes a day. Fucking yes. get them. They were fucking crazy. They, they had the gold chain with, with the bullhorn. They oh, were guidoed out, the, fucking yeah, screaming yeah. our faces. And it, Get and what the fuck are you? At like, what point, too, crazy, like crazy. most of them, you could walk away from that team and be like, I actually don't know how to play the game <laughs> any better than I did. All I know is that if I don't conccentrate, Correct. someone's going to talk about beating the life Correct. out of me. Yes. Yeah. We're and I don't want to do that. Was the only thing. The I learned that if you're in a fascist regime and they're right on top of you, right. just be like, you got it. 
I'm then, on it. So Even then, if you don't right. do it, you just tell him you got it. So then, okay, so the, so the Pete Bell, so we presume he's Bobby Knight, yeah. right? He kicks a ball into the stands. He, he, dis, he disrespects these kids in the first five minutes crazily as hell. Then they play another game where he they get the shit beat out. He says he would rather never see a basketball <laughs> again coach these than ever kids. coach them. And that right. the only thing that gives him life to continue living right. is that he only has to coach them two more games. Correct. Right. And <laughs> then is, so then he later wow, says he later says that line. was the best that was the best team he ever had. Yeah. yeah. Which is hilarious. But then he also He says the team with the most heart. The most part, yeah, the but hardest, they were complete. Yeah. And but then, but that team breaks him to where he says to the coach, "We need more talent. These kids can't fucking win. suck. They can't win." Right? Oh, but he says to them, "Like when we walk out of here, remember, we're not losers. We're winners. winners right. Smash cut. We are losers, right. guys." So that. this t- this right team up breaks up him, him, right? right this team of fucking losers <laughs> breaks him <laughs> to where he finally decides to right. violate NCAA rules right. and go to happy. And the whole time, like the wife, Bob Cousy, all them, they're like, nah, don't, you know, you're you're such a clean, righteous guy. I'm like, well, when Happy calls him out on his bullshit, when he's like, yo, your fucking team sucks the last three years, and you get $100,000, you get a little dumbass coach you get show, you, want, you get yeah. everything you want, and you think the problem is these kids, like, you're the fucking problem. And I was like, whoa, yeah, like, talk that shit, Happy. All right. I really That's one wish. of the things I loved That's about so good. the film is that it really. Freakin understood, or whoever wrote it, uh, what was his name again? Ron Shelton. Ron Shelton? Right. Those dudes understood the hypocrisy of college basketball. thank you. But what would happen now if you wrote this movie is that you'd get lawyers. Mm. You'd get the, like, behind-the-scenes fight. Yeah. The cool thing about this is that the guys that they brought in as the Hall of Fame coaches, they didn't bring in the Golden Boy Shashevsky. No. They didn't bring in Dean Smith. They brought in Tarkanian. The king of all. They brought in Tarkanian. He was a double bag boy. Bayheim, he was a double bag boy. Campanelli. Yeah. All of those They've dudes. They've all been wiped out. All of those dudes were like, fuck the NCAA. Yep. They are destroying basketball. Yes. They are forcing high schools to be terrible. They are forcing co- the college game to be terrible. Right. Uh, you know. And they all got hit with scandals, They made bro. All real choices to bring in Rick Fox. Yeah, he's in this up. Yep, uh, he's in that You know, yep. Shaq. Like, believe... Right now, if you were to hear the legend of Shaq, you would hear nothing but incredibly positive things. Right. The people watching Shaq when Shaq was there, oh my god, hated Shaquille Fucking O'Neal hated Shaq. until he started winning championships. Hated. They hate him. Every all he play can do was is a dunk. travel. All he can do is dunk. All he can do is he dunk. always rap. He doesn't have Why any he real movies? basketball yep. moves. Right. He cares more about Hollywood than he cares Correct. about mm-hmm. basketball. All these things that are you know, dog whistles. And he's but but he's like honest, wild dog whistles. He's a thug. That's the yeah. Allen Iverson argument well, more. But they would also say it about Shaq because why not? He's a giant black. But guy. then, but the part but, where which was him clapping back with the homegirl, the ex-wife, when she's tutoring him and she's like checking him about his score in the SATs. He's like, actually, your white liberalism is fucking racist. Yes. I was like, oh shit. I didn't catch that when I was 12. The I was shocking like, reveal. Yeah, that, no. that, that, that the shit fucking was, reveal. That was crazy. That shit that was, was given shit. to the people. Like, that's presented to people like my father. Wow. Who were sanctimonious about all of this, just like Pete Bell. Right. So you're watching them react to this. Yo. And we're young. That was hard, bro. That was It's hard. a fucking dope movie. And then, and then it's out of nowhere, wait. It's actually pretty dope. And then, wait, wait. And then, so he, I know, I know, I know. It's hard to like basketball. She's been tutoring him for like two weeks, yeah. if that. Right? Yeah. He yeah. calls her out for being a fucking liberal racist. And she, yeah. right? to her credit, yeah. is like. Doesn't say shit. She doesn't argue, right? Fair enough. She's then, on when, um, when Pete Bell comes to check in on them, they're fucking with each other, breaking each other's balls. And he says something the like. The best line in the Pete film. Pete Bell's like, oh, how do you tolerate her? And he's like, oh. He's like, you married the bitch. I was like, damn, he bro, says, you married the bitch. He says, and I think I got this right this time. I've been quoting it wrong for like You married years. the bitch. But he says, I can, see why you, I can see why you left the bitch. Yeah, he says something like that. You married. I was like, bro, you're like, you're a fucking 17-year-old kid in this grown woman's house. Well, she's not 17 because. No, he is. I'm he saying. Is, he's, he's not, but he's, like, he's not his character because his backstory oh, as a yeah, character yeah. Yes. is that right, he, goes he didn't graduate army. from high school. He, he went right into the army. He right, explains like why. Right. And so he, he, why. he played, like he played in Europe. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. he and then he's playing basketball in a shack with a tin roof with a net made out of like an old tire iron and gold and the, like a the, metal the, chains that can't break. The hoop is a tire. <laughs> it's a tire. It's a metal Basically, tire. He just goes up and yes. dunks and the whole thing goes through and he's like, ah, I'm like, yo, listen, 
This it, is, it's like a chicken coop with like a tin roof. The unbelievable <laughs> parts of the film are wildly, especially when if you're a basketball When they have to run through head. a field, mm-hmm. he, cross paint tracks, yes. in order to follow a bunch of kids to right. get to this he game. couldn't just drive. First it's a street. Foremost, it's in a street. There's a list of seven foot people <laughs> that every coach in the world is given. Right. And they know where they are Correct. and what they're doing and whether or not they can play basketball. Except for this one guy. One guy. This one dude goes to the army, a place where everyone is tagged and cataloged at all times. <laughs> right. And no one in the army is like, God damn, that guy can play some basketball, he's, even though he's playing all the time. You know, he's seven two two eighty. He's always know. playing. <laughs> we are not going to call this out and let him become a millionaire. Like he's right. supposed this is to. part of why this movie is bad. And then Listen, and wait, I'm saying, no, cause it, it, these are the There's hallmarks. Also, you were describing the hallmarks of bad movies and they, uh, Oh no, totally. Yeah. Like one, they of the, also, one of the biggest thing they do, I love the fact that this one of the things they do in bad movies that I saw once I saw this happening in this film I said this is a bad movie mm-hmm. okay is people screaming about their crimes in, the in public okay loudly so happy getting yeah. into it in the parking lot yes with people uh, with McNulty going like, at it we like, bought the entire football yes. team like, we bought them and there's people like this is yeah, they're this just getting taken they're getting taken this is a by. campus <laughs> bar they are huge they are here. at the yes. campus bar and everybody's and he's just got his, like he's got his two bimbos with him yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta yeah, get yeah. back to my drunk driving I'll just keep walking <laughs> like it's crazy because like that to me that's exactly what happens in these bad movies it's totally. exposition oh and then the scene wait in public right and then and then also the scene where Butch McCray, played by Penny Hardaway, is like, yeah. Coach, I'm homesick. If I go home, is my mom still going to have a job? So the, so the people are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Whatever no, arrangement no, no. you made. Then he's like, no, I'm not going to leave it until you find out. So he calls Happy on the phone yeah. and is like, Butch said there's something to think about his mom. And Happy's like, she has a fucking job. We got her a, a, a lawn and went for the kids. And, and, yeah, yeah. Da, da, and, if, and we gave her happy. all this money on the phone. He's like, we gave it's her all your on job the phone. to make him happy. Yeah, he's like, tell him you better... And then he looks at me, he's like, you better be at practice tomorrow. But he told yeah. everything on the phone, like yeah, all the illegal all shit. The, like, <laughs> and so when multiple the guy times comes, that shit happens this When Ed O'Neill comes at the end and inspires this incredible speech. Yes, we're by asking Wait, the hold on. Let me get the Ed O'Neill stuff, dude. Please. The Ed O'Neill stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the way, and again, Terrible I Terrible journalist, by the way. Horrible journalist. So the, we presume. He rolled up his sleeves. He did roll he up his sleeves. He did. Okay, yeah. you know and what? He, and, like, and he's like, he's he probably smells like cigarettes. He probably smells like shit. You know Take off my jacket. This is going to be a serious podcast. It's the same Speaking way, like journalists, the, I can say. I should get up and throw it on the ground and scream like, at you When guys Michelle like Pfeiffer comes in and Dangerous Minds no. with a leather jacket, yes. she's like, "Now I mean business." Yes. And everyone's like, "Oh shit, she's not playing." Uh, when Ed O'Neill, okay, so you also presume I didn't, she's I didn't not, notice though. this. <laughs> when Ed O'Neill walks in, when they show him, and he's like, he's in the newsroom, he's like, "Oh, we we tried all these years to get the football team. I know they're on to take." And his partner's like. Yeah, we just we just couldn't get them. We couldn't nail them. Okay, so it's kind of known now in California yeah. that the Western University football team, powerhouse school like Alabama, mm-hmm. wins always, they're paying all the players off, mm-hmm. right? They can't figure it out how or why. They don't know, but they know, but they can't prove it. Right. Pete Bell starts with three guys to maybe the best pay three them. players in the country. And not only do they have people on the ground taking photos in Louisiana, in Algiers, of fucking Neon getting a car. Then they have photos of Butch McRae's family. And then they have photos of fucking Ricky Rose's dad's tractor. Brand new. Brand new. Brand and new. difference in Indiana, and New Orleans. And they say in a... In a Chicago. F- yeah, right? Chicago. In a fit of incredible <laughs> truthfulness, one of them says... Oh, it was Ed O'Neill. Ed, Ed the reporter, says... Right. Reporter Ed. Uh, reporter Ed O'Neill. All we know is that his credit's not good enough to get a brand new tractor. But he also said that he And knew. that we know that the person who yes. deals tractors is, is a, a happy, friend of the program. Is an alumni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. An right. alumni. But he also had photos on a 1994 Ethernet <laughs> on the <laughs> laptop, on, his, yeah. on the big screen. Although I laptop. they're like, oh, yeah. like a Dot Matrix pound. printing right. all these contracts from the players. <laughs> so he has, yeah, he has the on letters the in the tent. Then he has, <laughs> the boots, he has boots on the ground for these three guys. When he couldn't, a football team has 53 fucking players. 53 players. And you can't catch them. But in one week, you catch three guys All of them. on the, the trail take. was still hot. To where he, Ed O'Neill, reporter Ed O'Neill, even says Neon didn't even want the car, and they gave it to him anyway. How mm. the fuck do you How know, do you know that? that? Right? How do you know that they did? He didn't want the car. He. It's audacious. It's audacious. <laughs> Ed that, O'Neill's question. Insane. Ed's Ed's question. But before we get to coming up before his question, we're almost, we're like we're like right there. Okay. But I, I want because I want to go back to this. Like, okay, hit me. He is finding out all this information, which is part of what makes this a bad movie to me. Is that like. 
if you were trying to do this on the low, right. if you were trying to do this surreptitiously, mm-hmm. and it's your first time in this, and you're already under scrutiny because of the point shaving scandal yes. a few years ago. Right. Allegations, allegations. Allegations. Which we find out later. Right. But you go as big as you do. You pick three people right. who are being who are being actively scouted by others because you see those other coaches Correct. show except up. Except for Neon. Right. Yeah, except for Neon. Except somebody knows about Neon. Right. But like, you're doing all this, and then these people show up all at the same time after this mm-hmm. losing season. Correct. Right? And you've got someone like Ed O'Neill who's already like, hmm, I'm worried about these guys. How is this to not? To be fair, how is this he not storms ridiculous? through this is a room. Ridiculous. He storms through to a get room. Caught rips by Ed O'Neill. Rips right. rips out some some Telex. wire contracts. Yes, like the thing the, the letters of intent. intent. And intent. he smashes off the thing. He's like, he bought him. I know yeah, he right. bought him. Yeah. How? Like you don't even. You, how do you know? He how bought do you know he bought him? That's the point. They've won two it's national the championships. Right. It's the same They're flimsiness of the rest of the dick. film. It's the same flimsiness of the rest of the film. It's like he will know right away because he's on his ass. Well, I mean, it's. And Ed O'Neill has not proven himself to be a good reporter because no. he, he has access to information he should they not have. They also were right. really flagrant here and like <laughs> to go from fifteen and sixteen to well we recruited the greatest trio in the history of basketball after right. a losing season after a losing right after a losing season and yeah. everyone in the joint make it make sense it, he's watching television or listening to the radio or whatever and people are like he's got it. it's time it's <laughs> time for him to leave and he's like you know what what if i just spent some money that's it that isn't my own money but here's and this was the point when i was talking to castro about this week mm-hmm. right about this movie castro brought up the the best point that could have saved the movie was he was like he didn't have to go for Ricky Rowe with the 30, 30 bands in a bag and he likes the hookers and the girls and the yeah. track there and fucking Butch with the mom shaking him down and mm-hmm. Lou Gossett Jr. Yep. hitting with the finder's fee. Right. He's like, all he needs is Neon Badeau. You're a top 10 team. That's Dude. it. That's Just it. Right. Does. So the, right. Dude doesn't need it. He doesn't the want the first Lexus. Move. Doesn't want anything. Highly intelligent. Unstoppable. The yeah. guy top that, 10. The yeah. guy that... Uh, you know, brings him in on this and gets yeah, him yeah, to go on, a, dude from, on um, a fan boat to an airplane <laughs> to a, a run through a field. You right. have to run with some children, right? Or, or you're not allowed tracks. into the basketball game made right. out of rubber tires. You gotta sweat. You gotta uh, sweat. Sweat through your Oxford. All of this, the whole time he's like, "Listen, this guy, he's raw. He doesn't know a lot about basketball." Right. right. The first thing we see is Shaq puts a nasty Spin post move, move and crushes. A one-handed dunk and screams at these people, and their reaction is, "You're the best, man. You're the you're, best. You're so you're you're a good basketball player." And and it disproves the theory that this guy is like Unpolished. he's not a very good basketball player. The second I saw him, and then we offered him a car, and he said, "I don't want the car." I'd be like, "You guys get the fuck out of my office. That's We're it. about to win a national championship." That's it, exactly. He said, or at least get to the Sweet Sixteen. And he got a nine hundred no on the don't. SATs. Yeah, did fine from a four fifty to a nine hundred. Yeah, yeah. It was so a five twenty. Five it wasn't five twenty. Five twenty. Five twenty because he spelled his class name wrong. Is culturally biased. Like, yeah, he spelled his name. Line. That yeah. was. I I don't think Gary liked the scene at first, but the second time we watched together, I was like, that this is an excellent scene. He invented In Hollywood social justice warrior look. <laughs> that was. And, and you I never saw it. anybody class in a culturally class biased. I, when when I didn't literature. It. Why are you doing so, African folk tales? He's like because it's not. called English literature. <laughs> it's the name of the class you're taking. Yes. And, I'm going to keep my own. He's like, thank you. He's he's having him analyze the Green Knight. Which I just rewatched again. I was like, "Oh shit!" He's, just, he's talking to <laughs> yeah, Green Knight, and Ricky Roach is like looking at ass. He's like, "Hey Bush, look at these, these mm. fucking girls over here." And then Dion's like, "Why are we talking about no black writers?" I was like, "Yo, this is dope." It's an excellent scene. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So Listen, the the movie. I'm not gonna say that the movie is an excellent movie, but for a basketball movie, it is. That's a different standard, though. That's a different standard. I get it. I get it. But I get it because the, end, the, the ending difference. season, that ending scene, however. Or the penultimate scene. Okay, let's do it. Penultimate scene. I think we're there. Oh, the penultimate scene is what mm-hmm. makes this movie worth watching. Really? In my view. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, what, it's what when specifically? You, when, when Nick Nolte, as Coach Bell, goes into the press room. See, this is where it killed me. That is, the to me, the best part of the film. It's why this is Friedkin. You need that monologue. You need to see Nick to. Nolte do what he actually can do. He does a beautiful job of both being like, I'm also an idiot. Right. And this, like, under-the-table capitalist system is bullshit. Yeah. Right. And, like, his I quit is maybe one of the best I quits in a speech. I'll be like, I'm going to quit. <laughs> he it's says so it good. so quietly and, like, reserved. I'm going to quit. quit. But when he's yelling, like, the best players money can buy! Yep. The oh, best players <laughs> money can buy! 
Oh that my is, God. I don't care. Though. It's like the greatest fucking, they're screaming back and forth about something no one cares about. Really. <laughs> no one cares. And then he's like, I quit. And the, the press is like, no! You get out good coach what... now. Where are you going, coach? But see, well, he left the scene... room, we're not going to follow him. But here's where it's fucked up. <laughs> Just this let him go out in the street. This is what me and Cash were saying, though. Yard. It's after the first game. Yeah. Yes. It's just one game. Yeah. And during the game where Ricky Rowe does nothing, he's yeah, he not a contributor, right? Jumpers. And Shaq doesn't touch the ball for the first 20 minutes of the game. Unpopular right? opinion, Ricky Rowe was, like, not a good player to, he pay, shit. to play at, at – Fake UCLA. Right. And the whole time, he's like, let's talk business. I want 30000 cash and a bag. The only reason and that bags. we believe that he's in the my dad fine. is he's co-signed by white Jesus. Oh, and remember when his That's dad, his racist ass dad, is like, he's, he's a Southern Baptist or First Baptist. Yeah. And he's like, oh, obviously, first. He's like, good, we don't like them Southern Baptists, if you know what I mean. That was very clear. But then when he goes to church with up. Neon, and he's clapping off beat at the black church. Yes. <laughs> Nick Nolte was like, yo, he's a fucking con man. Oh, he's, he's a straight up con man. Yo, that's one of the best things about Nolte in this film. The religion bit is so good. religion bit's really good. But I was raised Methodist. Yeah, oh, Southern, Southern or First or whatever. But then when he's like, he's sitting there watching the game. They're playing against Bobby Knight. They're playing against Bobby Hurley, who's at the fucking college hall of fame. They're playing against, was it Chris Mills or Calvert Chaney? On that team at the end. Or Alan Calvary Chaney. Calvary, okay. Yeah. Top draft pick. Huge fucking player. So he's College playing Hall against. Hall, right. So he's play, his team's playing with three three freshmen. He's playing against two Hall of Fame college players. Yeah. A Hall of Fame coach. Yeah. They're hanging in there with them after a losing season. And he's sitting there. He's like, what? And he hears Ricky Rowe's voice in his head. 30000 in a bag. <laughs> uh, straight cash. And he's like, I can't do this. Leaves us a little business to discuss. Like, right. first of all, like, French fried is, potatoes. who is this 35-year-old, <laughs> 17-year-old? Yeah, like, <laughs> but So I'm like, why is he of a crisis of faith? Because they're hanging in there against a team they have no business beating. Right. Then they win with a last second dunk yeah. by One of the Neon, greatest plays which is of all. awesome. And he calls a perfect play. Great play. That's the thing is whoever, I don't know who it was. I know that, um, I'm forgetting his name now, but he's one of the coaches that coaches against Western early in the film. Patino's in there. Not oh, and Patino, then, uh, was but, it Tubby um, Smith? No, it wasn't Tubby Smith. It's not Tubby Smith. The dude from Oklahoma. Um any, in any event, he was also with, an, I forget which two Hall of Fame coaches it was because yes. there's so many. Right. But those two were also, uh, basketball, were like consultants to Mr. Nolte, basically. Ooh. So okay. they were right. They were drawing the plays. The, the plays and were bringing crazy. The, and the basketball talk in the background is all like right. them and the, and the writers being like. It's really good. What you have to do is keep the ball away from that guy. Now, <laughs> there's one exception I was going to bring up. And it's the scene where they're like preparing to deal with something and they're watching game film of Indiana because the Indiana yes. game's coming up. Right, right. And the ball talk is no one was assigned to that scene to help out. Oof. Because he's like, well, this is Calvert Chaney, which everyone in that room, they're all right. college basketball coaches. Right. They know who, he's a top 10 player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like the only dude that gets play other than Duke and Carolina. Right. We, we love this guy. And he's like, we don't want him to get the ball at all. We want to deny him the ball. And they're like, right, deny that's him the, the ball. Deny. That's genius, the substance coach. Of this that's thing. genius. Yeah. <laughs> he's it's, like, oh, this guy shoots threes. We want to guard him. And they're like, another fuck. This is why you won the championship. So, he, so oh many my years. God. So many years of I just don't, I just And then it was so he good this. the whole time. And then they ruined it with that scene really hurts. I just, but I just don't understand like his whole crisis of faith. During the first, mm. Dick Vitale's all fucking out. Diaper Dandy, so he's he's the 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 play. Me Dick off the oh, with the slam and jam, baby. I'm like, yo, this is. I'm hype. I'm like, yo, this is gonna be fucking great. Like, I want to see this team Listen, win. He's a cartoon character, so he fits. He's like so good. that shit is so cool so in a good. movie. You would be great in Space Jam. It used to make me so angry when I would me watch too. basketball. But it's awesome. But in a movie, you're like, yeah, he's spectacular. He's phenomenal. It's highlights, baby. We're getting dunks. Yo, my, yo, my, my dad. Check this real quick. My dad had a girlfriend, and Dick Vitale was her fucking grade school teacher <laughs> Mr. Vitale holy shit he was like the basketball come, coach he's like we're gonna talk about math yeah. we're gonna oh. talk about science baby <laughs> remainders baby they're awesome <laughs> yeah like she had it because he was the basketball coach and he had to coach a class sure or teach a class good like, night <laughs> moon <laughs> Oh, oh that's God. the best. The Chinese brothers it's gonna you be you know what time it is <laughs> it's time for nap time baby let's go <laughs> How do you not love this game? No, oh, the PTA is like, what, Mr. Vitale? He's awesome, baby, with a capital A. Look at his science. Oh, phenomenal. Yo, him and 
so he movie. he I was like, like actually great. hanging around diaper dandies. Yeah, before. like Larry Wright. He was wow. when, he, when he coached the Pistons. So it was yeah, like yeah. before he became the Pistons coach, he was a high school coach out there. But anyway, so oh, having man. him in the movie, I'm like, this is fucking great. They have the bands and all that shit. And then like people is sitting there in the middle of the game. We hear Ricky Rowe. I'm like Ricky Rowe is what makes you fucking quit. Ricky Rowe sucks. Like who cares? Also, like if if he sat through, if they won. And this was real life, and he sat there and didn't go shake the coach's hand right. and yes. talk to all the kids and stuff. Yes. They would have roasted him alive. <laughs> they would have shot him on sight. Yo. Like, in this modern culture, if you're not going to like shake it, they make such a big deal out of handshakes it's that, so like, annoying. if somebody's like just shake someone's hand, is like mad that they lost. Yeah. We crucify them in the I know. court. And then, but him, like, going from that to this, the way they win, the team's back, the, Western. The post game speech to the team <sighs> is absolutely <sighs> legendary. And he's just saying, like, man. Like, <sighs> it, imagine, imagine if you, like, had your first kid. Right. And everybody, your family, cigars, we're having this right. blast of a time. It's the best day of your life. And I came and I sat down and I went, Rock of the, the rules don't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. And, and I like, it's the biggest come down. So there weird. is no reason you should ruin those right. kids' game. Seriously. I don't get it. That's what I don't get. And I, lo- I love the no final reason. scene. I, broke I love rules. reporter Ed O'Neill. You know, I mean, I got to do my, I'm doing my job here. I got to, you know, I got to ask you, did you give him a Lexus? Okay. I, that's a great payoff, but it should have been after they won the title. Right, right, right. It should have been, yeah, been all been whole, season. Exactly. Ed O'Neill the and the other was, dude are the crisis finding of conscience. The thing was also, Friedkin, yeah, exactly. finding out information. It should have been a building thing, not This half-time. worked against Friedkin because he's one of those dudes that's like, I have to show you in action. Right. For a long time, I have to show you why this person is as driven as they are. Sure. I have to show you them driven so much that it sort of clouds in Because remember the ex-wife which is Which works like, in all of his other great Right, but films. ex-wife is like, you have two championships, you have all this stuff everybody will be happy about, and there's not enough. And he's like, ah, can I stay the night? And she's like, get the fuck out of here, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay. That relationship is wild, it's by wild. the way. It's very I don't wild. know how many ex-wives are just like, yes, you can come over and bitch about your job. Right. Uh, at one in the morning, and then Nonsense. daps. Nonsense. But the, and then he takes her to dinner. We'll catch when he you lands on the next one. Guys. <laughs> he takes her to the dinner. He lies to her face about paying them, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand if he. If that he can't be that the first time he did. We see him the rest of the film. Is that the first time he's ever lied to this woman? Come no. on. That's why they make him. Out she to acted like it was fucking... the first time. Well, he, right. They make him. He's never lied to me thing. before. Then yeah. why are we divorced? But right. then also, okay. And then when when he finds out about the point shaving with Tony. When Tony was a freshman and they watched the tape, look, he keeps looking at the score. He keeps looking at the score. Oh, he was in over his head. He was a freshman. You know, no, he keeps looking at the score. He runs into the frat party where they're obviously playing Jimi Hendrix, like all 20-year-olds do in 1993, right? But when he's going crazy on Tony, where Tony's left crying, He's like, you desecrated yourself and your integrity. I'm like, what, what? You're doing it right now. You're worse. Who fucking cares? You're worse. Who cares if Tony shaved points three years ago? Well, I you're think an adult. Right. Who gives if, a shit? if this was an excellent film like his best, right? that speech would have come from a place where we're like, well, he's grappling with his own demons on this. Right. Yeah. But it didn't work that way. It wasn't no. as good a movie as his no. best. And I will freely admit that. It's about See, it would have been dope if so, he would have said that. It would, if he would have like, learned that early. Basketball just doesn't matter as much as you're right about it. Not yeah. mattering as much. It's as not murder. like like he did um, affliction a couple of years yeah. later, and like a horrible movie about like alcoholism right. and families. And like he can do. Nick Nolte can go real deep into a character. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he had much to work with on this. Well, I, what I'm saying I is like that it's that scene. That scene's good, but it should have happened way early in the yeah, movie correct. to assume, like, see, he yeah. doesn't tolerate any flim flam, right? Mm. So then later, when he does get into the game, what happened? And it's and supposed Rowe, to like hurt you're like, oh, his soul right. for him yeah. to realize his program was crooked without him being involved. Right. So mm. it, it, that, like, it would this was an weight. outside force that ruined his one cool yes. thing. But we can't have that happen after he's like pay them right that's yeah, my point right. that's you. the only thing yeah, where yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. this this is out of order fully it should have been way early yeah. where when happy says some shit like that oh you think you're so fucking up clean a whole lot yeah, of, I own the you. other thing right. is that like, i own you it is not entirely clear why happy is so evil so what they do is they bookend him with like <laughs> evil people shit yeah, like, he's here's got some bimbos. Like, here's some like bimbos. Yeah, he's got a, and, like, he's like, Oh, all his friends yeah. are just kind of drunk jerks. Yeah, and he's got he's, a big pool. Yeah, he's yeah, a typical yeah, yeah, fat yeah, yeah. cat. Yeah. We exactly. had to sort of like skimp on this very important character and just yes. make him a jerk. 
Right. Which is also the hallmark of a bad film. True. They love doing that. It's a bad film. There should have been more time But it's happy. also good. It's not a good movie. It's also a beautiful, like, anti-capitalist screed. But then what, what I what With, I what, what was no. funny was when we after when he does the speech one. we like, haven't gone to the last speech yet when he gets when he does the last speech yeah. right and he does and he's the whole thing and they're talking about oh you know when these kids my money it's yeah my goddamn yeah, money. money it is he's like <laughs> we went we were five hundred and you it wasn't good enough for you like uh, and I'm like dude college teams <laughs> unless you're the top three schools like you have up and down stretches right right where you. You're a good team for three, four years, and, and the guys graduate, move out, and then you kind of and like a lull. A, that's like a bridge huge years. trope in sports movies too, right. where it's like it's okay. the second you're not on top, you're right. out. And okay, it, fine. That would be true in the pros, but sure. in college, he, he if you, you if you win, win two titles, if you win two, two you have titles, so you have like ten tenure. years of just tenure. figure it out. We'll let you we'll, cannot we'll, you're, we'll deal with it. Basically, you're unionized. You're you're good. You cannot so then be when fired he leaves, without wild just right. cause. So then when he he quits and he's like, yeah, I quit. When he goes outside and they're playing the right, they're playing the music and he's looking back all wistful and then he goes to the playground Josh. and he sees Malik and Tyrone and them playing. Yeah. And these kid, this one kid is cooking these motherfuckers yeah. and people are like, hey, okay, Junior, get over here. Uh, let me see what you're doing over here. Now, now go like this. See if you flick your wrist. And the kid starts doing it. Yeah, like Oh, this. he immediately yeah. hits the first shot and he, he ever hits, takes with I'm one like, hand. I'm like, this kid's it's dropping like 30 already. He doesn't need your fucking health. He's fuck fine. Fuck that scene. <laughs> so that was the word. It's, it's like, a see, bad scene. He's a teacher. He likes the innocence of the game. No. But you know that was that was whack. That, that was, was whack. beautifully. So whack. It was beautifully crafted at the end <laughs> to eliminate that scene when they say now he coaches in high school, of low level high school, a perf- like, like a perfect Midwest high school, yeah, yeah, high school. Midwest high school. Right. <laughs> it is a perfect example of like how to use end credits to do your job, right? versus like also we're just going to show you that like this guy really loves basketball right. now for the last hour and 35 minutes we also told you that this guy fucking loves basketball he loves it so much so just he, to he drive the point home one more time clothes. then we're going to give you some post action credits mm-hmm. a little denouement of pointless information right that we don't need not needed he still loves he basketball. Loves he See, loves it, it so end, much. He, he can't. He can't give it up. And how many times am I going to stare down the barrel of "I love basketball" and get mad? I just can't. I love this film. Dude, fuck it's this part movie. of my life. It's great. Fuck this movie. Fuck no. And Neon, fuck this Neon movie. and stop. Butch, they both play in the you NBA yeah. on their own the same exactly. team. Exactly. They, they are. Orlando they they stop short worked, of uh, saying on the same team. On the same team. From, yeah. I appreciate. Went to the finals. Implied or implode. And I love that Roe got hurt and was like, man. He got, he got his 30K. Tractor. He's I'm good. Out of here. Yeah. He's set. We're going to live on this 30K forever. Nothing <laughs> yeah. will ever put a dent in this $30,000. <laughs> we'll right. As long as he's got the farm, he's good to go. He's he does. Farm. Listen, he was, farms, yeah. killing it right now. <laughs> it's, it's farmers a, doing great in major America. Growth American industry. farmers, doing great. Oh, it's the happiest, the hap, hap, happiest group in the, in the whole of the USA. It's recession proof. Billionaires Farming. are like exactly. jealous of these farmers. So much sorghum. Think of this. So much sorghum. All this tech. <laughs> now you got 30K. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yo, wait. 30K in Dog Dick, Alabama in 1993. That's, that's like money. $4 billion. That's, money. that's, that's $4 money. billion. Dollars. That's money. That's, yeah. Yeah. And he's probably, let's be real, he's probably leaving with that car they let him borrow. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, borrow so you got he like two it. very important automobiles, $30,000 and <laughs> television there. exposure. Yes. For playing like five games. <laughs> and yeah, and he didn't do anything. They just showed him like shooting the French lick shots yeah, yeah, yeah. with the wooden board. Mm-hmm. So the ball, which is, I love that, where the ball goes down. It's like, see, he's just so country. This is what, but Larry Bird knows him and he gives him That's the direct That's all that matters. Is that, is Larry that Bird gave him the one of the side. greatest players of all time was like, yeah, he could shoot. Right. I could hear Larry Bird being like, somebody being like, is he good? And like, He's pretty good. And they're like, that's enough for me. Sign, give him $30,000. Where are the cars? Where are they? Where are the women? Yeah. And then I like when get they get this when man Pete, some women. When Pete pulled up to Larry Bird's house yeah. and he had the basketball court and all that, I'm like, is that the house that he broke his back clearing out the driveway? Yeah. Or that was his I mom's wonder. house? That was Either his mom's one. House. But he like also like did all the work on that house himself. I'm like, they filmed this where this man literally broke his fucking back while on the Celtics making this house. Yeah. Because I'm a hardworking guy. I don't fucking pay contractors. Fuck that, man. I That's fucking roll my... I get it done. He ruined, I, yeah. he ruined his career. He <laughs> could have gone down... Get her done. He could have paid anyone to do that job. Like, no, he, I, had, he had the money. Fuck it. I'm working. I mean, I'll do it myself, man. Fuck that. No. He I'm took, a, he took his time off. 
and he went broke to his, his back, mom's house, broke his and back, he ruined his body building right. her a driveway. He did it. Values. And then when, when they filmed Basket, that wait, American he, basketball <laughs> values, folks. Wait, is he retired at that ninety? Wait, I think that might have been his last year when they filmed yeah. it. So he was on, and then he was in Space Jam after. Yeah, right? sure. And they were Dream Team and all that. But like, this is the end for him. So he got a little bag to be in the movie. A little yeah, like, a little, hey, little take care. You know, here's something for the Probably driveway. best because he, his early career probably drank away most of his Oof. money. <laughs> that Jesus. boy could drink. God damn. What is it with Boston sports stars? Is like Wade Boggs also had this legendary he, drinking streak. I remember the chicken, the chicken dinner every day. Oh, no. he He's... Known for having taken this trip where he like polished a billion beers on. They did an It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's, that's been a legend forever. <laughs> it's the Cabbages Podcast Network. <laughs>